Hello, I'm the Sandman and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the short story, The Board is Set. This was one of the most impactful stories from 2019, I guess, and I am nothing if not current, so here we go. So this story revolves a lot around a game of regicide between Malkador and the Emperor. Regicide features in quite a few of the Warhammer books. It's kind of likened to chess, but there's also cards involved. I think there's 20 pieces, but it's supposed to be a game that only the real elite can actually play well. Now the Emperor, true to form, is obviously not in his actual form. He has come in the form of revelation in this book. This is what he's referred to as and Malkador has come to him to play one last game of regicide as Horus' fleets are approaching Terra. Now even though this is a real game in the 40k setting, this is some kind of special version of the game where it allows Malkador and the Emperor to play out how the Horus heresy would go with each of the pieces representing different Primarchs. They have cards that they can play and this will change what can happen to each of the Primarchs. It's all very interesting. So Malkador has come to the Emperor for one last game, one last chance to play through the Horus heresy because the Emperor had never shown Malkador the final move. And we find out from the Emperor that the reason for this is because the Emperor actually doesn't know how the Horus Heresy is going to go. Even with all his gifts of foresight, there is no way he can tell how to defeat Horus Lupercal. Horus Lupercal does not ever take on fights that he is not certain he will win. Now straight away, Malkador accuses the Emperor of cheating and says how he always cheats because it's the Emperor in the game that hands out the cards, he controls the cards. And so Malkador thinks how can I beat him if he is giving me specific cards that he knows I can't beat? And the Emperor obviously says that he isn't cheating and this is obviously implying uh, the fact that there are other forces just as powerful or more powerful than the Emperor of Mankind who are affecting the way the Horus Heresy is going. Now, the reason I love this short story is because it answers quite a few plot holes in my opinion, but it also posits a lot of questions for the reader to ask, and that is my favourite kind of Horus Heresy book. Let's let the speculation begin. To start off with, let's talk about Malkador himself, because he is actually in the game, and we find out that this is the first game where the Emperor has told Malkador that he's actually a piece. He is the Fool. Now the reason the Emperor does this is because he wants Malkador angry so that Malkador will start playing like Horus would play. He actually chastises Malkador and tells him how he's actually worth nothing to Malkador. He says, do you want to know why, Malkador, none of the Chaos Gods have ever tried to tempt you to Chaos? It's because you're useless to them. And ultimately, this kind of works. Malkador does get angrier and he actually says the thing to the Emperor that I'm sure we'd all like to say to the Emperor. That it is the Emperor's arrogance that is going to damn humanity, not his. However, it is important just to note that even though Malkador has seen the Emperor cast aside the Thunder Warriors seemingly Primarchs over the years, he is still incredibly loyal to the Emperor and deep down he knows that he is incredibly grateful for the role that he's had. We actually get a really interesting insight into Malkador the Sigilite because we find out that actually he doesn't really have any ambition which is quite rare in the 40k storyline. Most characters have a great ambition but actually he is perfectly content serving as an advisor to the greatest mind and psychic might that humanity has ever created and ultimately we get quite a sweet ending to this short story where the emperor reveals that the fool is actually a key player in the heresy and as we know this is actually true because it is the sacrifice of Malkador the Sigilite who then becomes Malkador the hero which allows the emperor to board the vengeful spirit and slay Horus Lupercal. 
let's move on to the Primarchs because there are some severely interesting things that are revealed about the Primarchs and also nods to existing theories. There are things that we weren't sure if Malkador and the Emperor knew and we actually find out in this book through you know throwaway sentences almost that they're actually well aware of a lot of what has happened. So the first thing of note is that Fulgrim and Jagatai Khan are on the wrong sides at the start. This means that originally Malkador and the Emperor thought that Fulgrim would stay loyal and Jagatai Khan would be a traitor. And this isn't the first time that this has been discussed. So for example Magnus tells Jagatai that Jagatai's fate has been changed and we also know that half the White Scars did follow Horus Lupercal. The Emperor also tells Malkador early on in the heresy to watch the Khan at all times. One of the first things that happens in the game is that the piece of the Hydra splits into two and this is representing obviously the fact that Alpharius and Omegon are two sides of the same coin and there's long been a theory that one of the twins is loyalist and one of the twins is a traitor. Later on though, both of the pieces that represent Alpharius and Omegon turn red and they both join the Warmaster. Horus and Lorgar both turn traitor right at the start of the game. The first card played is Revelation. And what this means is that it only takes the knowledge of the warp to turn Lorgar and turn Horus to chaos. So this explains a lot of what the Emperor has done. So why he, for example, only told one of the Primarchs about the true existence and the true nature of chaos. And why, for example, he didn't properly explain the gods to Lorgar. In the game, the lion's piece is referred to as the double-edged sword. Now this is super interesting because as you can imagine this is referring to the fact that half of the Dark Angels turned to chaos and this is implying that the Emperor and Malkador were aware of this. And in an earlier book the Emperor actually tells Malkador that he is so certain of the Lion's loyalty he actually would question Rebute Gilliman's loyalty over that of the Lion. So how could the Emperor be so sure that the lion would stay loyal to him, but not the entirety of his legion. Angron's piece is referred to as the King of Nothing. This is a popular jibe at Angron because he was the only one of the Primarchs to not properly conquer his planet, and other characters often throw this in his face. Also in the game, Malkador uses Perfection, or Fulgrim, to sweep aside the Iron General, who is Ferris Manus. What's really interesting here is the Emperor's response to this. So the Emperor says clumsy as he picks up the two pieces, and he says, perhaps I will fix this later when I have some time. So this implies that there is something the Emperor could do to fix Ferris Manus. As we know, he actually summons Ferris Manus in the Master of Mankind book. But is he saying here that he could heal Ferris Manus somehow? Or is he saying that he could create another Ferris Manus? It's said that the memories of the Primarchs are actually kept in their blood. So in theory, you could create a new Ferris Manus using his blood and he would have the memories of the old Ferris Manus. And there we have it, those are some of the most interesting parts in my opinion from this short story or maybe even any short story from Games Workshop. It's definitely worth a buy and a read, there's actually more that I haven't discussed here today. It's only like two quid from the Games Workshop website and it's only 20 pages but trust me when I tell you it's worth every penny. I think it's also worth pointing out that if you're somebody who hasn't read much 40k lore, it's really worth trying these short stories because they're a great way to develop an interest in the characters and you start seeing which bits that you like and understanding how these books are written and ultimately they're really approachable you'll find. 
So thank you so much for listening to this video. I think it's super interesting that Malkador and the Emperor had planned out so much of the heresy and they could also plan out different versions of the heresy depending on how it would go. They talk a lot about how things have changed in the game or the game could have been played a different way. And it's so interesting to think how much did they plan of the Horus heresy. So thanks again for listening and I'll see you next time. Happy hobbying.